Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight, a seven minutes or less presentation. Here we talk about the shows you love or want to get into. Diving into Ava DuVernay's career, we will be talking about the final project in her filmography, When They See Us. When They See Us is the true story of the Central Park jogger case. Five kids are falsely accused of brutally assaulting and raping a woman and are convicted in Central Park, New York. The four-episode limited series explores the lives of the children and the families affected by this. I have been focused on solely reviewing works directed by those I've chosen, the requirement usually being they have to be a total director of the works they are creating. This opts out television mostly because directors will direct one or two episodes and quite a few other directors will take over the project. Here, Ava has directed all four episodes. This is perfect considering in the filmography of Ava's, I could not get my hands on all of her works. I thought this to be quite appropriate to make up for what I couldn't review of hers. Ava shows her skill not only in filming and storytelling, but in-depth research. Between Selma, 13th, and Now When They See Us, she leaves nothing out in the story she wants to tell. Which, if you look at it in this weird little lens that I see it in, Selma, 13th, and When They See Us is like a loose story arc all covering the social injustice and racial injustice that has followed in the last century. We start with episode one that shows our kids young, in comfortable lifestyles, finding love, understanding the friendships the kids have, or their family dynamic. When four of the five kids travel to Central Park, they witness a few assaults. Cops come by, sweeping the area, and apprehend them and several others. What was a temporary detention turns into a catastrophe of uneasy, tense, frustrating portrayal of police manipulation, aggressive means to keep the kids in holding until they get what they want when they find that said jogger brutally beaten and sexually assaulted. Linda Fairstein, who oversees this case, believes these four kids are the perpetrators to the jogger. By episode two, the police struggle to come up with evidence, to find timelines that don't add up, and conflicting accounts that don't add anything together, all without the parents or counsel present. This Despite a narrative that is desperate to find connectivity, the boys are forced to lie against the next kid whom they've never met. One kid in particular, Corey Wise, was never at Central Park, only to come with his friend Yusuf, one of the convicted, and is detained and questioned then soon suspected. The trial starts and despite the unsubstantial evidence and lawyers that fight it for these kids' freedoms, they are convicted anyway. By episode three, we see the kids live their lives in juvie. The third episode is focused on four out of the five kids as they grow up in lockup and then are released. With their lives completely ripped apart, they try to come back and piece together what's left. As we come to a close, we reach the fourth and final episode that is solely dedicated to Corey Wise, who was 16 at the time and was treated as an adult by the legal system. I should tell you, in this summary of all four episodes, I'm not mentioning everything. To leave you with some ominous anticipation that there's more to the story than I'm letting on. First episode hooked me just knowing what these kids were going to get into. To know that they were never a part of the sexual assault and even forced to confess was one thing, but what hurt the most was knowing that these kids were just kids. Kevin Richardson was only 14 years old when he was wrongly convicted. So was Raymond Santana. Antron Lecrae was 15. So was Yusuf Salam. And Corey Wise was 16. He only got caught up in this mess just because he accompanied Yusuf to the station. As we get to the second episode, we see how many of these kids don't have a fighting chance. When things look hopeful, it's met with utter dismay. When the lawyers that fight for these kids have everything in order and a chance to show the jury how the evidence, the timelines, and the confessions do not match up, I felt like Lewis Bloom screaming in the mirror in Nightcrawler. <laughs> When we get to the third episode and watch four of the kids live their lives in juvie, there were so many moments that I was truly fighting back tears. I had gone through about half that episode when I realized I never saw the fifth kid, Corey Wise, which started to worry me, wondering if his story was within the case and just never heard from again. In the middle of my disheartment throughout this story, I had realized he was going to be the last and final episode. I have to preface this. All five of these kids that play the real-life counterparts all did a fantastic job. And I never felt so much dismay to a depiction of racial injustice. The actor who portrays Corey Wise broke my heart. There are some scenes that live in my head now rent free. And by the time we got to the fourth episode, 
I lost all composure. Where the third episode was making me fight back tears to watch these kids struggle so much, it was this one that just made me lose it all. In the end, my friends, When They See Us was a powerhouse. A true testament to the injustice that goes on in the world. This isn't the only story that is told with true effectiveness, but this is told with excellence and prowess. Through this miniseries, it's often hard to watch, but this is something I feel, once again, everyone should see. The emotionality is dialed to 11. The performances are excellent between so many people I couldn't even begin to mention because we would be here all day. You know, if I had any flaws, and I mean truly reaching here, there are certain characters that have some dire consequences to the choices they've made. There are a few scenes that quickly wrap up, and they're just talked about in brief exposition, where we learn the fates of those certain characters without a huge amount of payoff. That's, that's to me, that's really reaching, but it's something that did kind of bug me. When They See Us is not for everyone, but if you give this miniseries a chance, I promise you, you will be moved, and you will have learned something as well. I'm gonna give it an A+. All right, thank you all so much for watching. If you have seen When They See Us, let me know down in the comments. Be kind, be reasonable, and let's talk. Like, share, subscribe, click that bell so you don't miss another video. With all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day. Until next time.